Hey, check out our sponsor, MMAHQ.com. We are here with Brian Simmons, the founder of Grappler's Quest, and we are at the Asbury Park Convention Center. That's we, old school up there. There's no digital. We don't need digital. Yeah, absolutely. We're old school. And it's I classic. Tell you, inside, it is an absolute madhouse. A lot of people in there. I saw Lyman Good competing. We've got the best teams here, the best grapplers in the 300 world. 300 teams are registered for today's event. We have the, it's the largest tournament, and I've been doing this for almost 15 years now. It's the largest tournament ever, ever. Not just, I say, for Grapplers Quest. You can go in there and you'll know. So when you do a little pan around the room, the most spectators ever at a grappling event, the most competitors ever at a grappling event, and this is just the beginning, bro. It's the quest. Everybody has a quest. Mine, ours, the sports, is to make it as big as possible. And big as possible, not just in event size, but event quality. We want, we want a quality. How you doing? Congratulations. You took first, no, man. Congratulations. None of these matches made it over 10 seconds. See? Arm bar, arm triangle. Did he do the hand? Uh, yeah. Lock in. Yep. It was just a mental trick. He did, he did. Um, that was a match middle of 10 times. First one was flying arm bar, the whole shit. Nice. Second one was head triangle. Third one was a combo off the belt. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Finish up I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I'm no, sorry, bye. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Well, I'm now we need to know who you are. I am Chris Ipax, Team CTMMA, Connecticut. These guys, you guys rolled deep. We went up to Connecticut, we've gone up to Boston. These guys are now starting to travel back like it used to be when it was teams from like the entire Northeast. You got everybody. Chris, tell about it. What's best happened? best tournament in the world. Hands down, best submission fighters in the world right underneath the UFC. Dana, keep your eye on these guys, man. <laughs> nice. All right? Nice. Brian's the man, best tournament in the world. Yeah. Well, Rappler's Quest in the hizzy. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. You so, know, the thing is, it's a great vibe. I mean, uh, the kid, uh, his nephew, Anthony, um, he hadn't competed in a while, had a really bad experience at another show. Uh, not ours, another event, and uh, and he was just really nervous. And his hey Nikolai, he puts on the best shows. All right, thank you, Nikolai. Brian is uh, definitely a star around here. <laughs> you know what? Like we treat, I, I try to. Pe everybody that's in our in our organization, they're a family. Like I, I like. I, it's such a positive vibe when you walk into a room. You know it was a success. It doesn't necessarily mean about the numbers. Numbers are awesome there, but it's an energy. It's a feeling. It's an emotion. People care. Grappling's becoming more of a spectator, not just a fighter fans. It's spectator fans. Mm -hmm. We got about I, I can't even you do the numbers. You see, it's like three thousand people. It's almost full. So great, great attendance. Love the grappling support from the community. Um, we're doing a great thing for autism. Uh, our charitable organization is AutismRadio.org and they're an organization that helps uh, uh, raise funds for families to help them get various treatments that are pretty expensive, that are not covered by insurance, things like hyperbaric chambers that help um, attack some of the uh, communication barriers and also some of the other uh, physical inter um, social interaction skills that some of the children lack. The actual air, uh, the forced air and the um, Barometric, pre barometric pressure uh, basically force, forces more oxygen in. It's like 3,000 a month. So we're actually doing a campaign, uh, Compete Free for Life. They're doing a fundraiser, 100% proceeds go to the charity. And uh, we're, they're doing great things. They got a, uh, a show that's uh, syndicated out to 27 cities, um, internationally translated into other languages. Aut uh, it's called Hope Saves a Day. It's the first family uh, autism radio talk support group. Uh, it's an open forum. People can call into their toll-free number. It's 877-HOPE-777. And, uh, you know, these guys are doing great things. It's like when you can... Uh, my, my son was diagnosed on the, on the high-functioning um, autism spectrum. And um, it, it definitely... Reading, reading the, uh, our, our charitable cause today hit a lot closer to home, even though my nephew... And, and my nephew always got me emotional when I would talk about it. But... Uh, Having my son there, it's a, it's an even more special thing, and yeah, charity is a great lesson to, to teach children. And, and you see the kids, you see the kids that are they're learning what charity is at a young age, and, and they'll want to. My goal: um, people shouldn't be afraid of success; they should be happy for success. And in success, when you are successful, you're able to do things like charity and. It's okay to be successful in life. People, people are, you know, I try not to focus on, but, you know, people, there's a, there's a negative, negative connotation or negative 
thing sometimes about people's success. And if people were learned how to be more happy for other people, and they gave love and gratitude and appreciation for, for what people are trying to do for the sport, like the Garve and other people, I mean, you know, walking around for years, and we were just walking around with little cameras and taking notes. I mean, we started from the bottom and we worked ourselves up. I want people to know that if they start sending that type of positive vibe, that better things will happen to them. There's some amazing books out there, uh, The Power, The Secret, talk about the positive laws of attraction, and good things are happening. I mean, look at our event. I mean, this is twice the size as our show in December. So clearly we're doing the positive thing, and I just want to, we want to keep doing the, the charity, uh, charity fundraising, keep running great shows. Um, we signed a deal with the Fight Network uh, to 8 million homes to be the first uh, pro grappling uh, show that's aired to 8 million homes. We, we're working on a U.S. deal, um, on-demand pay-per-view. Uh, Grappling.tv is under construction. It's going to be a really inexpensive monthly thing. We're going to put our entire catalog on there so people can see. Um, I don't know. You guys are great. I just, I, I really can say like, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. This is my, it's been my dream. I, everybody's like, oh, the quest. The quest means a lot to me, not just Grappler's Quest, just the concept of quest is that we always are trying to attain greatness. Uh, uh, the competitors are out there trying to attain glory. And it's their journey um, through defeating fear and uh, overcoming injury and mental uh, preparation. These are guys that, myself included, that would in, in school, I would be, I, I, look, I would look straight down. I would do a test, you know, I would give a presentation like this. Now, through martial arts, through competing, through challenging myself, I was able to overcome those other things. And that's the important piece, talking about life skills. What it ultimately does is it can change your life. It's not just about winning or losing, it's about facing your fear, it's about putting it all out there. And in grappling, you can do that, and you can go to work on Monday and you don't have a broken nose. <laughs> so that's where, you know, man, the sport, we, we added, uh, we got the judo throwdown competition, which is a throw, uh, like an epon contest that we added. We're adding that to children's divisions in June. It's going to be free for all pre-registered competitors.